Plot Mountain. You should not watch this video until you have watched the video for the story timeline. So if you have put this video on, go back, find the story timeline video, and make sure you watch that first. We're going to go through the Plot Mountain. Um, it is very similar. You'll hear the events. Um, but it's just a way for us to see how the author builds the story and brings it back down to resolve it. So that's what a plot mountain helps us to do, is to really think about how a good writer builds a story so that you're in anticipation for what's going to happen next. And how is that problem in the story going to be solved? So you will need this sheet called Plot Mountain, and you'll just need to write down what Mrs. B has on her Plot Mountain. Okay, so we're going to start with the exposition, and that's really just the setup of the story. Okay, so that's what the exposition means. It means who are the characters, what is the setting, how do they establish the plot line, how is the storyline established. So it's called exposition, which means to set up, and so we know that it takes place in a rural, rural means like country, okay, versus city. It's a rural town in West Virginia. The main characters are the Preston family, and in particular, Marty Preston. He is our main, main character. Uh, we have our um, Judd Travers, the bad guy in the book. And then we have what the story pivots around, and it's this dog, an abused dog named Shiloh. So this is how the exposition, how the story is set up. Okay, I, the only thing that I felt was missing from this um, plot mountain was a place for us to put the problem because every story has a problem, a conflict, right? We talked about it as a conflict, conflict or problem. And so in the middle of this mountain here, I want you just to find a place to write in this box and write the problem, and I'm just going to put that, it's the other word for that is conflict, because we use that a lot in class this year. We talked about the conflict, right, in a book. So the conflict, or the problem, for Shiloh is that Marty wants Shiloh as his dog, but he is owned by Judd. So that is what needs to be solved. How is Marty going to get Shiloh to be his dog? Okay, so now we're going to go up to some parts of rising action. If you remember, rising action is building up. It's all the different things that happen in a book that builds up to this top part here, which is the climax. And remember, the whole time we're working on solving this problem. So, rising action. Shiloh is returned after being found by Marty but comes back to Marty. Then Shiloh is hidden right in the woods, but is attacked. And then Judd finds out because Doc, Tra Doc Murphy has to tell him, but Doc Murphy lets Shiloh stay at the Preston's house for healing because he was attacked. So all these, all that part of the book. So from the setup of the book, all the way through till we reach the climax, that is called the rising action. It's how an author builds a story um, to try and solve the problem. It's how is it solved? Okay, so they're working on how is this problem going to be solved, reader? I'm going to give you several different things that I'm going to keep you on the edge of your book paging, book turning, right? In your in your your page turning. Mrs. B will get this right. The page turning in your book, right? I'm going to keep you turning those pages because I want you to get to right up here. And that is the climax. The climax for Shiloh is when Marty is going over to try and make a deal with Judd and he catches Judd illegally shooting a deer. And he's able to blackmail. I didn't talk about this in our um, story timeline. But blackmail, it just sounds like an icky word, doesn't it? It is an icky word. We should never blackmail someone. Okay, blackmail means that you have a secret about someone, and you're going to use that secret to get them to do something for you. It's Another word is coercion. 
Okay, and it's it's not right. Okay, so what Marty does, again, just like his lying and his cheating. Well, he doesn't cheat. Sorry about that. He doesn't cheat. His lying and his secret keeping, right? He doesn't cheat. Sorry, Mrs. B shouldn't have said that. Judd Travers is the cheater, right? He's the one that steals from the shop owner. But his lying and his dishonesty and now this blackmail, we see we're all flawed, right? We're all sinners. Okay, so we see this in this main character. But this is the climax of the book because now Marty has discovered a way that he thinks will solve his problem. Okay, of being able to own Shiloh and take him away from Judd Travers. So we're at the climax in the book. So that climax in the book is when he sees Judd shooting the deer. Now we're going to have some falling action. They make a deal. And they make a deal that if Marty works for Judd, he can pay off Shiloh and then get to keep him. But um, Judd breaks the deal. Judd says, oh, there's no witness, so nope, I don't need to give this to you. The deal is off. But if you remember, Marty still goes and works for him, doesn't he? And he befriends Judd. This is all falling action. This is leading us to think, is this conclusion, this resolution actually going to happen? So climax, falling action happens after the climax. So the falling action... Sorry, I'll let you, I'll put that back on there so you can write that down. Okay. There, now you've been able to see the whole board. <laughs> I might be going a little too fast. You'll just maybe have to pause this video. Um, the falling action happens, and then we get to the conclusion. And the conclusion is, is that Judd finally agrees to let Marty keep Shiloh, but there's still another part, right? Remember, Mom had said the whole time, and Dad, we do not have enough money. So Marty still has to get his parents' permission. And he gets his parents' permission, and then he gets to keep Shiloh. So the problem, right, this problem, Marty wants Shiloh as his dog, but he is owned by Judd gets resolved. That's why we call it a resolution. Okay, it's resolved. And it's when Judd gives Marty the dog. That is our plot mountain for Shiloh. I wanted to keep this nice and short because it really is just an extension of what we did on that story timeline. Uh, I Again, I really hope that you enjoyed the book. I hope you felt that rising action. I hope you could discover on your own that climax, and I hope that you could identify that falling action and the resolution in the book. A good reader is really one that can see that plot mountain throughout the book. So that's your job as a reader is to investigate that and to um, determine all those different parts. Uh, I will be sending yet another video <laughs> And this will, that will be for a review of the test because you will have a test on Shiloh on Tuesday of next week. So I will be sending that yet today as well. Bye, fourth graders.